until you complete more of the parking or all of the parking, and, and I'm just I'm try, trying to get some talk out here, then at the end of one year or the end of two years or whatever it is, then it would technically fall due that they would have to meet the requirement of the landscaping for the parking at that time. Now, I know I'm creating a headache for everybody out there, but we got a headache right now. I don't know what we're going to do with it. I have another question. If they had simply enlarged their current sanctuary, made an addition so that it was that building got bigger, would we be in the same situation? Yes. Because that was a non-conforming something. They were non-conforming. They can't change a non-conforming without becoming compliant. That's correct. So whether they built a new building or they made their old building bigger, they have to then come into compliance. Yes. I would be willing to support it. And I know Ted says it hasn't been done, but I would be willing. I'm, I have trouble granting a variance. That's what my order is. I would, I would be in favor of supporting a temporary CO that's been approved by fire, engineering, everybody, that, that it's a safe building to occupy. The handicapped parking is, is acceptable. I would, I would be in favor of supporting a one-year temporary CO that's revocable in 12 months so that they understand in, in 12 months they can come back but I think we need to put closure to this and say you gotta have your funds together and have this thing done in 12 months or you gotta get out of the building. I, I agree uh, up to a certain point. I think what I'm, what I'm hearing is that the temporary certificate of occupancy is a function of, of another office and that is something that is decision that has to be made by that office and not this board. I don't think we can superimpose on that office how long the temporary certificate of occupancy can last. I think if we deny the variance and there's some discussion prior to a denial of the variance that the petitioners can seek out that temporary certificate of occupancy and also get an extension then they understand that that gives them an opportunity to seek out the necessary financing and do whatever it takes. And I, and I agree with what you're saying. I just I thought I understood Ms. Brazel to say that whatever we issued that they would conform with, be it the, the zoning, be it permitting, planning, whoever. So I, am I wrong? It's the we marriage. don't have the authority to say that we're, we're, we're instructing or whatever. I'm trying to come up with we're approving for them to issue a temporary CO for 12 months. Right, we so, can't do yeah, that. We can't, we can't, we can't, can't direct that office to do it. You can either grant or deny the variance. Okay, all right, so you're and right. And what I'm here, once they get in that building, oh, right. it's going to be hard <laughs> to try to revoke nice. anything. Yeah. Uh, that would be a so that's not, nightmare. I want to bring up something. The point that she brought up was the fact that you denied it. They can't come back for another year, right? That's correct. That's correct. They cannot come back for another year. And if they are denied, then whether or not they give them a 90-day CO is, is obviously up to that other office. But if the lender finds out that they cannot occupy that building, they're more likely than not going to give them financing or work with them to go ahead and get that parking lot open than to foreclose on the property and get nothing. So we can force the bank's hand yeah. They'd rather loan the money, extend them the, 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 the 30000 whatever it is, to do the minimal parking, as opposed to losing the whole kit and caboodle because there's no money coming in and they can't even meet the, the requirements on the note. You see what I'm getting at? I understand what you're saying. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that that's helping the situation, especially if the Bank. You're, you're, drunk, you're bringing it to a head. You're bringing it to a head. Something's got to go. Something's, Something's got to go. The petitioners can always withdraw this petition. They can. Yeah. They can withdraw. withdraw the petition, mm -hmm. seek out that temporary certificate of occupancy, occupancy, give themselves some time, instead of having this board deny the variance and foreclosing the opportunity for them to come back prior to For a year. They can withdraw. Correct? Yep.
they, they can request a withdrawal and at that point negotiate with the bank, talk with and let them know what would happen if we deny it. If we deny it, chances are the building people are not going to give them a yet. continuous extension of a certificate of occupancy. <coughs> at that point, you know, maybe they go back to the bank with that and say, guys, we're, we're stuck between a hawk and rock and a hard place, and you, you're the one that's got to help us get paved parking right. lot so we can give you good. If they want to be fully secure, under the banking regulations. And if they withdraw it, they can turn around and come back at any time with the same request. Yes, they can. New application, new application fee. Mr. Chairman, can you give them an opportunity to reflect on what they've been hearing? Would you, do you want to think about that for a few minutes? We'll move this to the end of the agenda and let y'all talk about it a minute. Do you understand what we're saying? Trying to. If you go back to the bank and say, look, we have got to secure some additional financing to perfect the parking lot like we need to, to have a certificate of occupancy, to have a viable asset in the church and the property. And we need to borrow another 40000 or 70000 or whatever it is in the form of refinancing or a second or however you in the bank can work it out so that you have the funds to finish this. If you withdraw the application, then you can come back at a later point, one month, two months, six months, and ask us to wade into this again. to decide whether to give you another basically 30 days to try to get a better plan to try to get financing worked out with the bank in order to to complete this in a reasonable amount of time and that, that's going to be a problem because like i said i'll try to get the financing they said we don't have enough money, so you know. well but you went to a, di a different bank if you go back to the bank that has your loan now so now with the loan officer and say, hey, we got to figure out a way somehow to get some more money through you, refinance, re recast the note, get us some additional funds. Otherwise, we're going to have an asset that is not a complete asset. It's not going to be a valuable asset because the, if, if the bank takes it back, they're in the same boat you are. They can't do anything with the property until something's done to finish it out. The bank doesn't want the property back, I assure you. It's in their best interest that you go back and tell them that there's a possibility that we may deny this request, and therefore it's in their best interest to help you help them be perfectly secure with their, with their, with their collateral. You see what we're getting at? Because they don't want the property back. Am I right? I, I think you're right. We just we have to be careful that we're not dispensing legal, legal, legal advice, advice <laughs> and, and or financial yeah. advice. We, yes. That is not the, the you know we, we can't do that. Not, not right. Right. I'm not trying to do that. I'm just Mr. Chairman, can we can you entertain a motion that we uh, move this item to the back of the county? Well, I don't think we have to have a motion for that. We can just do that. We, we're going to put this on the back burner until the end of the meeting. We'll call it again at the end of the meeting. Y'all sort of stew on it, think about it, and we'll call it again in a few minutes. See if there's a lot to see if there's any common ground. Okay, the next case we're going to call is County Case VAR 201-4-04.
Tarika Harris, 4359 Beaver Run Road. Ms. Carmelo, you have the floor again. Yes, sir. This is a request for a variance to replace a, an existing manufactured home with another manufactured home. What makes this case a variance is that the rules change from when you are allowed to have either single wide or double wide in this area. Um, with the adoption of the ULDC, um, the previous zoning was mobile home subdivision, which will allow either or. The new zoning is R10, which only allows for double wide. In this case, you simply want to take out this existing single wide and replace it with this single wide. Staff didn't see any problem with that and just issued a recommendation of approval. Any questions, any discussion from the board at this time? Is there anyone here in support or is the applicant here would like to discuss with us what they're doing? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Could I get your name and address for the record? General Hodges, 5042 Southwest Lake Drive, Lake Park, Georgia. Okay. And I'm representing uh, Mrs. Harris. Uh, she asked me to talk in her behalf. Okay, Ms. Harris, could I get your name and address if it is different from what's in the public papers already? Oh, so Sarita Harris, 43 Road. Okay. The home that she has existing on her property has not lived, been lived in for a good long time. Uh, it looks okay from the front, but uh, it has damage, it's leaked, uh, the, floor, the floor has all uh, areas where it's coming in. Uh, she has priced refurbing it and it would cost way, way more than she could uh, have purchased. Uh, and what year is yours? What, six? It's a 77. It's a 77. Okay. Uh, this home she's going to replace with it is a 1998 Horton. And uh, on the inside, it has been completely remodeled. The floor, the ceiling, the walls, everything's in the, the carpet. It's completely brand new inside. Okay. So it's ready to occupy. All right. Anything else? Any questions, any comments from the board at this time? Is there anyone here in opposition to this request? Does anyone have a question about what is being requested? Was there any contact to your office concerning this case, Carmella? No, sir. It's a big dog. <laughs> oh, my God. Hmm? Okay, any questions or discussions before I ask for a motion? Can I get a motion on this request? I make a motion that the variance be granted, sign the criteria of the... I have a motion from the Gaskins to grant the request as presented, signing criteria D. I have second from Mr. Orenstein. All in favor, please raise a hand. Unanimous, good luck with it. Hope everything works out like you want it to. God bless you, thank all of you. All right. <clears throat> Next case we'll call is City Case, application 2014-04, Petroleum Services Group, 1300 South Patterson Street. To the show. Thank you. It's been a while since I've been able to participate in the show other than note taking. This case is a various request for petroleum service group for a lot that's on Highway Commercial located at 1300 South Patterson. It's on the corner of Smith Avenue and South Patterson Street. It's it currently contains an existing building that's being used for a convenience store mini market type thing. They are proposing to add on the gas station facet, uh, specifically a couple of gas pumps and a heater. Now it does pose some logistical issues with various cases in front of you, specifically for variances. Um, the first variance relates to setbacks. Specifically for the canopy as a structure, as a building structure, and for the gas canopy specifically. 
We do have regulations in the LDR that require buildings to be so far back from streets. The building, the canopy is a little bit too close to the Patterson Street side, so that's your first variance. The second variance under this is for the supplemental regulations for gas canopies and for the gas pumps themselves. That specifically requires that gas pumps, air hoses, you know, the things that you inflate your tires if they're a little bit low, um, and the gas canopy itself be at least 50 feet away from a right of way line. This gas canopy is a little bit too close. So that's subsection B under this first variance. The second variance relates to the frontage along South Patterson Street. And again, this comes from the supplemental regulations for gas stations. It requires that the primary road frontage, in this case, South Patterson Street, be at least 150 feet long. Unfortunately, there's about approximately 100 feet of frontage along Patterson. So that's variance number two. Variance number three pertains to curb cuts, specifically that no more than one curb cut can be within the first 200 feet of road frontage. Along the Patterson Street side, there are two curb cuts within 100 feet and there is almost one continuous curb cut along the Smith Avenue side. So that's, that, that's very two for The last variance relates to, again, supplemental regulations for gas stations, gas stations and curb cuts, in the sense that they are a little bit too close to the property lines and to the intersection of Smith and Patterson. They can't be any closer to a property line than 10 feet one curb cut is within two feet of, about two feet of a property line. And there is a northern curb cut that is approximately 30 feet from the intersection. They're required to be at least 50 feet from the intersection. Just a side note, the existing building was built prior to LDR standards, and we thought that we would cover this variance as well. Um, it is a little bit closer to Smith Avenue than permitted, um, we do understand that it was built under previous regulations, but we reviewed it part and parcel of this case. We do understand that this lot is a little bit smaller for such a development. We also understand that it is a quarter lot, which kind of affects its development in the sense that it has two front yards rather than just one as most have. However, we're also concerned that by adding the canopy in the gas station, the gas pumps, it's, it's a lot for a small amount. Um, after reviewing it, we do recommend for approval for the setback for the existing building, and we do recommend denial for the appearances. Any questions? And based on that, if the board denied the first three and allowed the last one, it would probably, for all practical purposes, kill any development only. So well, they do. That this was all triggered by the request for a business license late last year, early this year, for a convenience store with the gas station. Given the fact that this was running in front of ZBOA, the business owner decided to apply to change his business license request to modify it just for the convenience store without the gas station at this point to kind of be able to get his business up and running and then potentially at the gas station if the variances were approved. So they do have a business license for a convenience store without the gas station. So, yeah, so if, if, if he sense. just opens up in the building there, remodels the building, so right. to speak, and puts a convenience store in right. there without gas pumps, he can do that without any complications at my rock. You are correct. You are correct. It is strictly the idea of selling the gas. That's true. It is tricky. Yes, sir. Okay. Is there some way to fit the gas pumps on there without a variance? That would be very difficult. Um, given the fact that they are proposing parking, Last year, sorry, parking right here and the gas pumps right here, and they moved them a little bit closer. They're at 17 feet right now. 50 feet would probably put them right in here. And logistically, we do have concerns about 
about the ability to use these parking spaces to keep them backing out. When a car sitting here filling up gas, that might be a logistical thing. Oh, okay. Yes, sir. The, if they were to develop it like this, do they meet the parking requirements? Just barely. Just barely. Are they counting the parking that's on the side? Also, it's, if you look at the previous plan, there's, I guess, parking that's off Smith Avenue. Right. But on the developed plan, it doesn't actually show that parking. Or it's, the spaces aren't striped out, I guess. They, are you talking about the spaces that are right now aren't striped? Mm -hmm. Okay. We do have some concerns specifically about 90 degree or 45 or 60 degree parking here because it gets so close to the right of way. But the reason we ask for peril, well, we kind of deflated that idea for lack of a better word because if they did 90 degree, 60 degree, 45 degree, that would mean part of the parking space would be in the right of way, which isn't They can do two parallel. They can see these a little bit closer to the building and not be within right of way. They do need all the parking that they're showing in order to function. Including the parking that's on the road there? Yes. Yes. As two spaces or as the? It, the two spaces. Okay. Because it's shown in the existing plan as one, two, three, four, five, six spaces there almost. Right. We, we, Engineering had substantial concerns because they were in the right of way. Right. And no parking is allowed in right. the right of way. I, I, I didn't think parallel parking was allowed anymore except for. It is. It is. If it's, if it's lengthwise appropriate, if it's widthwise appropriate, and they have logistical okay. you know, manner to, to get in and get out in this circuit. Okay. Any other questions from the board at this time? Any discussions? Trace. <laughs> So essentially, in a nutshell, you don't take exception to the canopy placement because you're you agreed to approve a recommended approval on the first variance. Is that correct? Just for the building that's existing. Not okay. The building that's existing is the mini mart convenience store. I'm not real sure what the right word is. Right here. Okay. Right. The one that's existing. Everything to do with the gas pump, the canopy, everything to do with that is where the first three sections of variances are. The fourth or last one is strictly for the existing building without the pumps. Actually, the existing building without the pump, without the existing building is turned in subsection B under variant number one. I know this is confusing. Right. But it's it's kind of under. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Sorry, I'm confused. Any other questions? Any other discussions before I ask for input from the applicant, possibly? <coughs> Is that you ready to ask a question? Just call me. Call me. <laughs> okay. Is there anyone here? On behalf of the applicant, or is the applicant here and, and would like to give us some additional information? My name is Lonnie Manning, I'm with the Charlie Services Group, uh, 1759 State Street, Waycross, Georgia. Um, originally, when this project started, um, I approached the city of Aldosta about rules and regulations for you know, setbacks uh, for existing for proposed structures. Um, I was informed that the, uh, the, the setbacks were 25 feet from the property line and that we were going to be allowed an overhang of within 10 feet of the property line. So I proceeded to lay it out, <coughs> lay out the site with that information and submitted it and when it was submitted, then the additional supplemental requirements for the uh, service station part or for the fueling part uh, uh, became apparent. So um, after talking with different people in the uh, permitting office, this is what I submitted as for 
you know, for Jesus. Um, uh, the actual gas portion of the uh, project has already been approved by the state of Georgia Fire Marshal's Office, which, um, you know, there are certain requirements as far as fuel installs within property lines or from property lines. It, the only way that this particular project will work is if we are allowed the variance on the setbacks due to the egress, egress and ingress for traffic um, on that site you know, due to safety concerns. Um, I believe that this particular layout is the best layout for that particular property line. Um, without the variances, the gas pumps and canopy would be too close to the existing building um, to allow, you know, safe traffic movement in front of the building. So that's what I have. Any questions? Any discussions? I have a question. Um, there are other gas station properties which are currently unused on South Patterson. Did you consider any of those, acquiring any of those properties for this, or how is it that uh, came we to? We were contracted to install the fuel system as far as where to install it. Thank you. Um, Questions? Any other discussions? Is there anyone else would like to speak on behalf of this? Is there anyone here in opposition to this request, or is there anyone here has questions about what is being requested? Is there any response to your office concerning? This case, either positive or negative. We had two, but they were neutral. We had one gentleman who thought the sign that, sign that I posted in front of the building and the property was disabled. And then the second gentleman who called was concerned that we were applying for somebody had applied for a variance for his property because he got a certified mailing in May because he's an adjacent property owner. He thought somebody had applied for a variance for his property. After I explained, he was okay. Okay. Any other questions, discussions? Anybody need to talk about it? Can I entertain a motion on this request? A motion that um, the first variance be approved. We have a motion from Dr. Housel to grant the variance for the building and deny the other variances relative to the balance of the property per staff recommendation. Second. That was you, Warren. I have a second. Ms. Gaskins, all in favor, please raise a hand. One, two, three, four, five, all opposed. I have five, one vote. Early voting is down. Okay, we're going to go back to Mouse County Case VAR 2013-19, North Carolina Church of God. Gentlemen, if you would please come to the lectern. Okay, based on the discussion that we had, do you wish to withdraw and see what you can work out, or do you wish to leave the report before the board? I was going to put on a request temporary to temporarily seal. Temporary 
I am withdrawing. So you are withdrawing the request for the variances at this time? And because it is a voluntary withdrawal by the applicant, there is no action needed to be taken by the board. That's correct. Okay, what you need to do is you need to stay in touch with Ms. Carter at her office and the engineers at their office. Ms. Carter for a while. Braswell. Braswell. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's old. Somebody shoot me. <laughs> Somebody shoot me, Ms. Braswell. I apologize. Uh, at this point, that's what you need to do is stay in touch with them to make sure that you are as close to comply with regulations concerning where you need to be moving. You definitely need to continue to try to move forward on the loan situation to try to figure out how to do the project in a shorter time frame, which would hopefully make it a little easier for the board to grant you a temporary variance. Hi. Case has been with General, can he have a copy of maybe the minutes? I mean, what was the day release would have something that at least tell the banker, hey, you know, that this is where the standoff is and it might come up. As soon as the minutes are available, you can get them from Tracy. Yes. Now, what happens is I do a set of draft and those are generally, I usually don't do them until the week before the next meeting. Um, and they want to be official minutes until adopted by the board, hopefully at the May meeting. So you can get a draft copy as long as you understand that it is a draft copy. And you go to the congregation, go to the board, whatever, see what you can do. Thank you. All right. Yes. Yes. We need to hang on to that. Okay. Uh, we have other business approval of the minutes. Anybody have a problem with the minutes as they were submitted? Yeah. Um, I see. I was absent. Of course, I, I was, but I thought it was excused. What well, What was the reason you were late? Last minute? Yes. It takes precedence over everything I do here. Don't argue with it, she's always right. <laughs> <laughs> now, I heard something about that. <laughs> so, you want me to change first for uh, That'll be fine. All right. All right. With that notation, will somebody give me a motion to accept the minutes? So, the minutes be accepted. I have motion Dr. Howell to accept the minutes with the correction. Second. 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 That was Nancy. Yes, Nancy. All in favor, raise a hand. Unanimous, good to go. Any other business we need to talk about? Yes, we need to talk about some appointment. Um, so far we have Dr. Howell, correction, Um, I don't think you have to resign. No. Um, to run? Uh, no. 
not not to run. You don't have to. But if she's elected, she, she can't, she can't, she can't sit on this. So when do we have to make this decision? Well, there are terms in May 7th. So that before or after the next meeting? That will be. And the, the, the election at which point you will know is the May 6th is a meeting? Yeah. Okay, well I'll come to the meeting on May the 6th and then y'all can decide after May the 20th because um, you can put my name in and ask them, but we'll be... The election is... The election, May 20th. Can, can, I, can we make a, no, a nomination as to Dr. Willie Housen? Nominate him to serve on the board? Um, usually we don't do it in the form of a nomination. We oh. just send a letter to the county commission or whatever okay. saying that it is a request of the zoning board that he be reappointed if they see fit. Okay, okay. And we can do the same for Gretchen. And if she gets elected, then we we'll just have to, she'll have to resign. We'll have to get somebody else appointed by the county right. to well, replace her, anybody. to serve out her unexpired term. One thing worth noting, Gretchen and I both witnessed the commission retreat this year. And one of the things that they discussed was appointing a commissioner liaison to the boards, to the appointed boards and agencies or whatever. So they want to be more active in this commission, 